so let's uh, go to part 2 of the previous video so here I am using set dot seed 33 you may set dot seed 33 33 or you can set any number this is basically to generate same random numbers uh, time and again if you don't put here then then every time the system will generate new random numbers so if you want to replicate what I have done you have to set the same random numbers here you can browse more on set.seed okay let's go and uh, these libraries I have discussed in my previous video at the moment we are going to generate simulated data white noise random normal uh, normal random variables 100 so we are generating here y which is basically purely random numbers or oh, and see what type of plot it is so you see white noise series is is always stationary but stationary series may not be white noise because it may not have mean exactly zero um, its condition is mean is constant so what is uh, autocorrelation function for white noise so you see all all correlations are within plus minus two standard errors so partial autocorrelation function are correlation auto, all correlations are within plus minus two standard errors so it means white noise process does not follow any pattern so in previous video we said that white is regress than yt minus 1 because it was ar1 process so you can guess the value current value from past value but here you you don't have dependence on past values so process is independent let's generate another set total time period equal to 100 let's set theta value uh, a coefficient a auto regress coefficient theta is equal to 0.8 simulation let's ignore it uh, we just go for AR1 now we are generating simulated model and in simulated model total length is T model is list AR equal to theta which means AR1 model so let's uh, we have AR1 model let's plot plot AR1 or auto plot AR1 so you can you can learn it more uh, by browsing so this is auto a auto regressive process with AR coefficient equal to 0.8 means y is equal to 0.8 times y of minus 1 previous lag so so you can you can generate this simulation at your own by watching this video now again we are going to generate a set tt equal to total observations equal to 100 white noise random numbers of size 100 time series now we are going to apply dickey fuller test augmented dickey fuller test which we have discussed in our in our lecture 2 video part 2 so time series uh, augmented dickey fuller test so you see here this uh, minus 0.41 p value is 0 0.01 so we reject the null hypothesis that series is non stationary we conclude series is stationary and obviously this white noise series was stationary let's have intercept equal to 1 white noise process uh, and here we are adding time trend 1 to 100 those values are added you can browse more because main yahan pe agar sari details dunga to these videos will become very very long so <coughs> we have this white noise process uh, and we just process white noise so you see here you have a trend here you have a clear trend and these small kinks are your random errors so if you if this is series which is trend stationary as I have discussed in my previous video time series again if you take it so uh, it, it is basically uh, augmented decouple test rejects the null hypothesis of non stationary alternative hypothesis is stationarity so you see this series apparently is non stationary but why then you are concluding series is stationary because this process is basically trend stationary it's it's deterministic trend is there 1 to tt that is that is 1 to tt means time trend is there so it is it is called time trend stationary 
there is deterministic trend and th th uh, this one here we are going to generate uh, stochastic trend stationary series here T S T C B L uh, 1 to 100 cumulative sum cumulative sum means that e1 plus e2 plus e3 as i mentioned that integrated previous shock is added so random norm up to 100 so all previous shocks are added in in the in the next one next one next one so ho that is called a random walk how we see random walk so this is your random walk now you see this is basically non stationary series the previous one was also non-stationary but that was trend stationary here this is called different stationary process or this is called random walk process let's apply Dicke Fuller test in this case you see p value is 0.21 which means we fail to reject the null hypothesis that process is stationary we failed to, uh, null hypothesis was that process is non-stationary and we fail to reject null hypothesis so it means process is non-stationary and uh, okay you can you can uh, use kpss test as well similarly so we basically get kpss test in which null hypothesis is stationary we fail to reject the null hypothesis of stationary in kpss uh, whereas uh, uh, okay kpss test is uh, for trend stationary so we 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 we, we think that this series trend stationary uh, white noise uh, the previous one this one whereas if we put uh, plot it for random so, uh, you can you can test it for random walk model as well if you look at this level so we, you conclude that pro series is non-stationary which means uh, we say trend stationary versus level stationary so we, we come up with that series is trend stationary let's have another simulated data for AR1 M is equal to 1 which is intercept AR1 AR1 model list AR.8 that theta is equal to 0.8 we have added here and now you can calculate G1 ACF G2 here you know yourself that data is AR1 so in this case you see autocorrelation function decays geometrically partial autocorrelation functions decay at two legs so you will guess AR2 actually this process was AR1 so you have to estimate model AR1 as well as AR2 so I am estimating here AR1 model AR1 here does not mean we are AR AR1 is the name of the series so you calculate it you fit it and you check the residuals so residuals are well behaved seems everything okay you can also uh, you can also estimate model AR2 you can also estimate model AR2 so that you can compare whether AR2 is preferable or AR1 let's name fit 1 1 here let's check residuals 1 1 so you see fit this one seems to be significant so therefore it seems 0 0.20 divided by 0 0.09 that seems significant so close match uh, between AR1 and AR2 model for AR1 the model we have simulated was AR1 but there seems two fitting two close candidate models similarly you can generate AR2 model 0 0.6 and 0 0.2 AR AR and you can also go do things similarly so you see again this this seems uh, AR1 model while we have generated AR2 model so you can you can compare which model is good one now we you can generate AR MA12 here's AR2 AR1 that is 0.8 moving average is 2 so moving average first coefficient is 0.8 second coefficient is 0.2 and you can estimate your model you can forecast you can estimate it you can compare it last thing which I am going to discuss here if you have a random walk model as I mentioned earlier 
so you see fit armor model and in this case what is the behavior of the residual so you see here your residuals are not well behaved that's the name of the game that if your series is non-stationary and you apply some model so its residuals will not be these are the residuals which have which we have seen in previous models were well behaved but here residuals are showing a clear trend and autocorrelation function of the residuals are ab above plus minus two standard errors so therefore we assume that this model is not correct one and if you apply a, you, you need to take differencing or trend detrending or something else Thank you for watching. The purpose of this video was to elaborate all the concepts discussed in my